Hey guys, Johnny here at Nine Lives Racing. Um, what we're going to be doing today is going over this guy. So it's a firewall. This is inside of our um, Time Attack uh, prepped V8 Miata. As you can see, the big transmission right here. Uh, we're doing a full tube frame on it. And uh, just to let you know, Nine Lives doesn't do fabrication. Uh, we don't we don't fab up stuff like this. This video is purely a response to uh, our search on YouTube, where we tried to find somebody who could give us some pointers on making a firewall and we we didn't find anything. So. There's no good way to sit in this thing. Unless you're sitting forward. So I'll just do it this way. Hold on. Okay, so stuff we saw online was a lot of um, uh, like drag racing stuff where it's a bit different where you have a motor plate and everything else. So first thing we did when we looked at this was we went okay this is uh, this is a lot of room this is a lot to take on all at once uh, so what we did is we attached we created these bars right so you see these these tiny bars these are t you know probably what three sixteenths maybe quarter inch thick uh, steel tube and we used this little guy to make them which is just a laser so we just set up a line, we made sure it was parallel, and we set it up all the way across the car, as you can see right there. And what this does for us is this gives us a, uh, it breaks up a huge monotonous job, and it breaks it down to something that's smaller, something that you can deal with. Um, so instead of trying to make a big panel with bends in it for this whole thing, I'm going to make two panels. I'm going to make one for down here, and then one for up here. What you're going to need is some equipment. So uh, get yourself some cardboard, and then what you're going to do is uh, basically just start trimming it until it fits in this little, this little spot right here. So it's meeting up nice and close to the body. Um, around this tube, uh, we'll draw a little circular line. Uh, so that way we meet it up close. Um, and you can see why we installed the, uh, that center bar. Because it just, it's from making, this panel's now going to be half the size and far, uh, far much easier to work with. That's what I find is the key to being a good fabricator. It's making it as easy as you possibly can. Um, at least you know it you can make it really hard and chances are you'll try twi twice as you'll put twice as much effort into it and it'll come out looking half as good so if you make it work a lot easier uh, then the end product will look a lot better okay now that we have our template we're gonna go ahead and make templates for the rest of the car so um, I little secret already got it all done so uh, let me go grab that and I'll put it in so stay tuned firewalls all taped in um, you can kind of see the details that we went into on this um, now on the cardboard or let me start over now on the passenger side, you see we have a plate welded in right here. Um, that magnet is. That plate holds the pedals. Now on the passenger side, there are no pedals. There's nothing over there. Um, we'll probably end up putting a battery or something like that in that location. Uh, but over here, uh, we have our pedals. So uh, we, we need more room. So I'm going to see if we can show you the top, how far out this stick. Now we're going to look over on the passenger side, you can see that's just the bar that we put in is perfectly straight, you can see it right there. And uh, well, as it gets over here, you see we got to bend it out to make room for the pedals, right? And that's give us full travel on our brake pedal, which means our firewall can't be flat. Um, you can kind of see in here, I'll grab my janky stick. Um, so what we did uh, to simulate the bends is we actually made a cut. Here, what it is, is it's going to tell you where the bend is going to be. 
so you can mark it and put it in your brake. Um, so that way you know you're putting the bend in the right spot. Okay, so reason we picked the material we did, we're gonna use uh, just standard steel on the bottom of the fireplace, uh, bottom of the firewall. The top we're gonna do a carbon fiberglass style. Uh, reason we didn't go with uh, aluminum, right? Because you think, hey, why don't you just use aluminum? It's lighter, all that fun stuff. Two reasons, one, aluminum absorbs heat. So aluminum will grab the heat that's in the air and pull it in. Um, that means when we have side pipes on the other side of this thing and big headers, that panel, if that was aluminum, that would get stupid hot and it would probably start messing with our pedals really bad. Now, if you're new to fabrication and you don't know what tools to get, get clamps. Uh, they're your best friend and literally, Instead of having your best friend come over every single time to hold a piece, you just use clamps. Well, literal best friend. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark this thing out, like just like so. Get a good light on there. You see, sure if you come on, focus, buddy. There we go. And then, and this is going to give you your exact shape, right? So that's that. Now let me grab a plasma torch on here. Okay, move the camera a little bit. So we got our piece trimmed out here, and I'm gonna use the camera. I'm actually gonna stand behind it and use it as my face shield. Um, so we got our handy little plasma torch. Now this is, this is the crappy little Eastwood one that you can get for a few hundred bucks. And when you cut this, you wanna not follow the lines exactly, because uh, a lot of times you get, if you're gonna do it free-handed, that line will come out looking like this. It'll look like it'll look like crap. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off the major portion of it all and just kind of go around the outside of it and uh, just get as close as we can. Good there. Okay, so this is our mini shear. Let me focus there. And if you don't have one of these and you plan on cutting sheet metal and you have a garage or other kind of small area where you can't fit a full size shear, I highly recommend it. This is actually the first project where we played with this thing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece, right? You can see the lines that we drew. And we're just going to follow along on the lines. In this one, we're going to get really close to the lines, as, co as close as we can. So follow along here. And this thing's really impressive because it's just, in essence, it's a huge bottle opener. See? And now you got a real sharp edge, real nice finish line. And honestly, this thing's like 50 bucks. It's the best money I've ever spent. So, you know, I get to a little point there, you flip your little lever over and it spits the piece back out. So it's pretty cool. So, all right, once we get this cut out, right, we have this little pit and this little guy. Uh, those little mini shears, the bad part about them is they can only cut to the left. I don't know if you're looking at the video if it's backwards, but you can only cut this way. Uh, cutting this way, it doesn't work because it, it removes the material in a corkscrew pattern. So if you're looking to get some good material off of this side of the cut, um, it just doesn't work. So what I did is I used a plasma cut. I used as much of that mini shear as I could, and then I used a pair of shears, right? I've used plenty of these with uh, the mechanical advantage built in, and honestly, nothing works quite as well as, as this old trusty pair. I think I got them from my grandfather. Um, so, but they do last for a long time. They're also really good at cutting boxes. So, <clears throat> now that we have that cut out, uh, what we're gonna be looking at is, uh, uh, of course, you don't wanna leave this flat, right? And the reason you don't wanna leave it flat is really simple. Can you hear that? Makes noise, huh? Now imagine a 
500 horsepower LS1 with solid motor mounts and it making every single panel in your car make this noise. It'll drive you insane. So what you want to do is put some bends in it. Uh, we used a bead roller to make this and you can see the difference. The noise you hear is just me throwing it. Uh, <coughs> right here. See it doesn't, it's nice and quiet. Um, and you want that so that way when the thing's idling it's not driving you nuts, it's not stupid loud. Uh, also, you can take it and you can try to bend it, but it makes it a lot stronger. So it gives you a much stronger piece. On this flat piece, we can bend it pretty easy. So what you're doing with sheet metal is when you put a bevel in it, uh, you make it stronger. Now, Okay, so this is our bead roller. Uh, it came from Eastwood. It's our 8 inch, uh, it's what they call an 8 inch bead roller. As you can tell, yeah, let's see if we can turn it. So it looks like that. Uh, and so we're gonna put it back here. Oh, let me grab the piece. Got it. Uh, we're gonna actually do it this way. So we're gonna lift it up, close it down, and I'm gonna screw this little top screw right here. Um, and I'm just gonna screw it until I start feeling a little tension, like I do right there. Um, and then screw it down a little more just till I can feel a little bit of tension in the material. It's not torquing it down, it's just kind of giving it a little, uh. Sorry about. There, there. It just, just wait until the material stops you. And then tighten this guy up. Cool. So that's all good and tight. Now we're gonna go through and we're just gonna follow our cut. So, pull it down and we're just gonna follow it along. Really nice and easy. Nothing too crazy. You'll see the material start to deform a little bit and that's okay because as soon as you get to the other side, it'll bend back. And just follow along. You can see, and that's what it did. It bent a nice little piece. Now listen to this. Remember before we would shake it and make the whoop, 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 whoop noise. Now that noise is just about gone. Um, and so now it, we're at the point where we got our pieces, we got them cut out. Now it's time to put them in the car. So now it's going to be a time lapse with the welder and us just sitting down and just knocking them out. So as you can see, we got ourselves a, not so much completed, but definitely tacked in, ready for uh, the next adventure, uh, firewall. Um, of course, when you do stuff like this, you tack in everything first. You, well, you do the welds that you're not going to be able to get to later, uh, which is what we were doing first in the beginning of that time lapse, as we were completing some of the welds that just won't have access to after we put the firewall in. Um, then we tacked in the firewall. Uh, once we get everything laid in the car, uh, as far as like electronics, you know, stuff that needs to pass through the firewall, uh, uh, then we'll uh, uninstall everything, take it back up to uh, basically just a shell again, and do our finish welding. And once finish welding's done, we paint it and uh, put all the parts back in the car and we got a runner. So uh, that's it for me today. Uh, we got ourselves the firewall in. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, you know, shoot them in the comments below. Uh, if you guys are uh, like seeing this kind of stuff, give us a like, subscribe to our channel. Uh, subscribe, subscriptions are super cool. We dig them a lot and even just a simple like is really, really awesome and we appreciate everything. So um, other than that, if you guys see a project you want to see us do, let us know. Other than that, we'll check you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.